All right. Okay, so welcome to our June 26th Team Fully Fit team call. Tonight, we are going to be talking about reverse engineering your goals and talking about how, like, what actions you need to be taking rather than um, focusing on the end results um, and just breaking breaking the goals down. So a couple announcements. We have the Emerald in a Day training starting tomorrow, so this week. I think we have three, maybe four coaches in there right now. Um, Anna, Jessica Meisner, a couple more. I can't remember who. Oh, you guys, did I mute you or did you guys mute yourselves? Amber, you're muted. Um, Lindsay, Allison. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it Cater, I think, or Carter? Yeah. We'll live with you. Yeah. There's Haley. Doing it. Cool. I muted myself. I figure the girls will be. Oh, okay. That works. <laughs> oh, good um, Lord, Haley, are you driving? Um, I'm going to set the phone on the passenger seat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, can you? Dedication right there. <laughs> um, so that will be exciting. Hopefully we have some new emeralds this week. Um, and then Dan and I were talking about our schedule for July and um, we decided to do a, a business opportunity webinar again I think we decided on June 30th, so this Thursday. So I was going to post about it in the team. So if you had people that were maybe interested, you can send them to that. And um, I think we're going to try and do those more frequently, um, just because it's a good, a different way to present the opportunity. So, um, and I think that's it for announcements. So I will jump right in. I have a... PowerPoint. Let me share my screen. If I can find it. Probably turn off my Facebook too. <laughs> my notifications. They just like pop up. So I'll do this. Hopefully that works. It didn't work last time, so. Okay. So, the beauty of this business is that we are in control of everything that we do and how hard we want to work and how much action we want to take and what we want to do. And there's really no other job that lets you do that. I just think of my job at the investment company. It was, you're working for someone else and they're telling you what they need and um, what you need to be doing. And so this business, it all starts with us and kind of the, the fire that we have in our gut and the belief in ourselves and in this business and then in our belief in our ability to make a difference in people's lives. So it really does start with us and our belief in this. So I just wanted to say that first before diving into like the content because goals are great and they're really important to have. But if, if we don't realize that it's, it, all of this is up to us, like we can decide if we want to work today or, or move our business forward or not. And so um, it's just all a choice for us. Um, so obviously our goals are, are important, but they really don't do us any good if we don't have an idea of what we actually need to do to get there. What actions do we need to take? Um, I get really fired up about this topic because I didn't do it <laughs> for, like I would set goals for three years of my business. I would say, I'm going to be two star by this date. Like I would do the whole Shalene um, write out your 10 goals and your push goal. And I would say, I want to be two star by this date. I want to be five star by this date. And I still have all these notebooks where I wrote down these dates and I 
but I didn't take it that, that one step further. I didn't break the goals down into, you know, to understand the number, the number of people that I needed to be talking to. Um, I'm going to pause for a second and mute someone. <laughs> If I can, I can't open this. Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe not. All right, just kidding. I can't get it to open, so. Um, oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Okay, so I get really fired up about this topic, like I said. <laughs> um, I didn't break my goals down and understand the number of people that I needed to be talking to. I heard all the advice from all the coaches. They all say, you know, you need to be talking to this many people in order to, to get this many coaches. And it, it was usually, like, you need to be, it was kind of a ratio, like, you need to be talking to at least 10 people to find three different coaches in that group. Um, okay, there we go. So I wanted to build an income, like we all do, and I wanted to help other people build one too, but I wasn't focusing on what I, what I needed to do that, which was volume. So to grow your residual income, which is what we, all want on top of you know helping people we want we all want to grow an income with this um, to grow that you have to grow and mentor your team which in turn grows your Im impact and gives you a bigger impact um, and then it grow that grows your volume and then it grows your residual income so it's kind of one thing flows into the other but I didn't realize that at first um, I focused a lot on challenge groups and the inviting to the coaching opportunity was just really scary. And the, the more I put it off, the scarier it got. <laughs> and so now it's still scary, but I realize now that, you know, retail sales can only take us so far as far as like an impact that we want to make in people's lives. Um, but by growing a team, you are expanding your reach so far. Like I just look at our team now. I mean, like our coaches have coach are getting coaches and their coaches are getting coaches and the, the reach and the, the mission that Beachbody has is just expanding to all of these families and all of these friends. And, and it's just a big spider web, which is just so cool to see. So the impact can be huge. Um, so there are so many things these days that grab for our, our attention. So we have to choose and purposefully choose the actions that we're going to focus on. And I know we talk about this all the time. It's all, there's no secret at all in this business. Everyone tells us this stuff over and over and over again that, you know, it's all in the small daily activities that we do. And they're the things that build momentum, but we just have to consistently keep doing them. So they're, you know, adding and connecting with new people, inviting people to our challenge groups, personal development, being a product of the products, posting on social media, and then follow-ups, messaging people, and just building relationships. It's all those simple things put together is what, is what causes momentum to build within your business. And it, there's no one thing that gets you there. It's all of them combined. Um, okay, so this was the concept that kind of made me want to talk about this for our team call, and it's called The Law of Averages. And it's in this book that I'm reading called Being a Starfish. And it's actually written by someone who does doTERRA, which is the essential oils company. That's my sister's company that she is involved in. And it's actually a really good book. It takes a little bit of work 
to translate the, what he's talking about within doTERRA to Beachbody world. But this concept, it's, it's all like, I Googled it and you can find it. It's a marketing term basically. And, um, it is basically, if you want to double or triple your sales, you need to double or triple the amount of people that you're talking to. So he talked about this neighborhood example. So let's say that there are 15 houses on either side of a street. So there's 30 houses. If we're going by the law of averages, and I've heard, like I said, that three out of every 10 people that you talk to will eventually become a coach. And that's a really good ratio. Sometimes it's, it's only like one out of 10 people. Um, and that doesn't even mean that they'll do anything with the business. It's so, so that's why continually talking to new people about it and adding new people is really important. Um, so back to our little neighborhood example. So there are likely three coaches in those 30 houses. All you have to do is knock. If you knew that before you started knocking that you could have three amazing people join your team and you could help them change their life, their mindset, change their family's lives, change their beliefs, help them to dream again, get in shape, feel amazing. You know, all of the benefits that we all have felt from this. Would you keep knocking until that 30th house? If you knew that you could find three people, I would, I mean, it, it's kind of a no brainer to me. Um, but what, what do most people do? Especially when you're new in this business, you, you start knocking and at the first probably five or six houses, you get three no's and you, and you stop. They, we think that, oh, I must be doing something wrong or this doesn't work. I don't want to bother people. Um, I don't want them to think that I'm, you know, part of a pyramid scheme. Some people might take a break to think about asking more people or ask for advice. Um, or they'll just sit and wait for people to come to them. But what they don't do is they don't keep knocking. And so that's the, that's the key is to just keep going. Even when you don't feel like it is to just figure out the number of people that, you know, figure out your goal and then figure out the number of number of people that you need to be talking to every single day and don't quit until you get to that number. Um, so in order I'm going to read my bullet points now. So in order to double your success rate, you have to double your failure rate as well. And we're always talking about, you know, what is your view of failure? And um, I found this little graphic in this book, um, Go For No. I don't know if you guys have read it before, but um, it's really good. And it's all about going, well, just like the title, going for no, going for the number of no's that you, so shoot, shooting for like talking to 20 people and you may get 18 no's, but you could get two yeses. That's not a very good example for, to explain the book, but it's basically, it's a good book. Just read it. I think most of you have read it actually. <laughs> um, it's, it's basically trying to change your mindset that no is not a bad thing. Um, and so this graphic is from that book and the old, like, which way do you think of getting no's from people? Do you, I didn't finish my sentence there or when you, <laughs> so do you look at it as you, you're either moving towards success or you're moving towards failure? Or do you think of it as you're moving towards failure and then it just keeps going because you break through that and it eventually will become success. I hope that you guys start to look at failure as this bottom one because I mean, we've all heard the, the little sayings and the little quotes about failing. Um, but the failures are what make us successful and are what make us strong. And it's, it's what gets us to where we want to be. So always just pushing through. Um, so I wanted to, because we're talking about reverse engineering some goals, I wanted to talk about um, what are your goals? And if any of you ever like have a goal that you have in mind that you want and you want to reverse engineer it, you know, either talk to me or Dan or your upline and we would be, 
happy to help you kind of break it down just to kind of, so you can see, um, like I'm going to go over making $500 a week. Like what? um, no $500 a month. That's one of the examples that I'm going to give. And just so you can see the amount of volume that you need in your week leg. Um, or if you want to rank advance to diamond, what, what does that look like? Like how many people do you need to be talking to? Um, and the best way to do that. So what is your goal? Do you just, you want to hit success club five or 10? Do you want to make $500 a month? Maybe $500 a week. Do you want to rank advance? So the two examples that I kind of picked out was the f one goal is to make $500 a month. So since we are paid weekly, let's break that $500 down into, so, and let's say there's four weeks in a month, sometimes there's five, but that breaks it down. You'll need to make $125 a week to hit that goal as an emerald because only as an emerald and above you get team cycle bonus. So you get $14 a cycle. So let's, Dan and I were talking about this. We're going to break this down into 25% of your income for that week is going to come from team cycle bonus. And 75% of your income for that week is going to come from commissions because there's, as coaches, we get, there's so many different scenarios and how you can make money. So in your strong leg volume, you're going to need 450 at the $14 cycle. And in your weak leg, you'll need at least 200. So you would get a team cycle bonus of $32 for that week. And that's just a portion of your income for that week. So let's look at the commission side. You, if you sell a 21 day fixed challenge pack, that's $50. Shakeology commission is $32. And then a 21 day fixed base kit, that's $15. And so your total commissions are 97. So for that week, you would be making $129 and 49 cents. Does anyone have any questions about that? I think we've talked about kind of team cycle before and Dan's kind of the expert at that. But if you do feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Um, hopefully it's clear. <laughs> and it's the second goal that someone might have is rank advancing. And so many factors go into this. So posting on your page about how coaching has changed your life. There are lots of different things that you can do to talk about coaching to attract people to you. Um, to get them interested in it to sh so you can you can show them through your posts how it has changed your life um, you can invite people to our sneak peek events and our webinars and after building a relationship with someone you just simply ask have you ever considered but most importantly we have found that a lot of our coaches have come from our challenge groups so running quality challenge groups every single month is really important. Um, you want to be looking for the people that are in those groups that you see potential in. They're commenting or liking on everyone's posts. They're being super encouraging. They're posting in the group. Um, sometimes there's even people that will start posting on their own wall about it. Those are the kind of the people that you want to be watching for. Um, and if you invest in your groups, and teach people about the culture of Beachbody and, and what we stand for. And something that, I forget who said it, but it, it, at, when you run your challenge groups, you want to run them like you're, you're grooming your challengers to become coaches. So having them do, some people do like, have them do some personal development. Um, find, go out and find some encouraging articles or um what else do we do as coaches <laughs> take pictures of all of your food take pictures of your workouts have the, have your challengers um post things on their own personal walls i'm trying to think of some other things that we have done but basically you want to 
take your challenge groups and just instill that culture of Beachbody into them so that they get the success that they want and that they reach their goals because that's what really matters. Um, whoops, not down here. Rank advancing. So if you're wanting to hit Emerald, I heard from this from Janelle and I've heard it so many times from other coaches that, and I have already said it in this call, but if you want to find three coaches, you need to talk to at least 10 people. And that's a really good ratio. So for every three people, for every 10, 10 people that you talk to, three of those people will become coaches. And sometimes it's even like one of those three that sign up actually like do something with it. So um, it's just, just the way that it is. And um, everyone has different goals and different reasons for, for doing this. And it's just about um, sharing, sharing about what we love about it. Um, so if you're wanting to hit diamond, and this seems like a lot, but it kind of, it works out. So if you want to hit diamond, you need to talk to 80 to 100 people to have a solid diamond business about coaching. And then if you break that up, because that just seems overwhelming, taking it, talking to 80 to 100 people about coaching, um, if you break that up into just five people a week, one person per day, which is what they recommend anyway, um, it'll take probably three to four months, you know, if that's equally spread out throughout those three to four months. But sometimes there are months where you're going to be more successful than others and you're going to sign up more people. So it could be faster. Um, it just depends on the circumstances, I guess. Um, and then as you keep going, you will gain momentum and confidence, but you just have to keep asking or maybe just even start asking people um, if they've ever considered or if they have a need for it. Um, sometimes people have, they have maybe thought about it, um, but they never think to do it on their own. And they're just kind of, it takes you asking them, um, if they've considered to actually say, actually, <laughs> yeah, I have. Um, so just keep acting and keep serving. Um, and so that's this last, this last slide. So lastly, just keep serving. Um, just focus on service when you're talking to people. And I know a lot of times Amber mentioned this, but like talking to new people, people outside of your warm market, um, it's easy to be nervous. And, but if you're focusing on just serving them and figuring out what their needs are and just being, being a friend, wanting to learn more about them, you take the focus off of yourself and you're putting it on them. And it just makes them more comfortable and makes them open up more. Um, and then just focus on leaving everyone in a better mood and in a better place than when you started talking to them. I think that's a good goal. So just instead of focusing on selling something to someone, just focus on serving them where they're at and the rest will fall into place. Um, I think that was all I had. So... If you guys have any questions about any of that, we can chat about that. Or um, if anyone has any questions or anything that they're struggling with, we can chat about that. Um, or I can just keep rambling. <laughs> I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see all of you. I was a little confused. Where does the $32 come from on the team cycle bonus? When you're yeah. So the team cycle bonus. So if you have 200 volume points in your weak leg and mm -hmm. hopefully like 400, 450 in your strong leg, you will, all I did was I took, um, $14 because that's the amount that you'll get per cycle and divided that by the 450 in your strong leg and that gets you the 32. I think that's right. I'm not good with the income type stuff. Dan's more the expert on that. 
<laughs> so basically you get like 14, you have to have 200 on one leg to cycle one to cycle yeah. always. So like every time you cycle one time, you get $14. So you can cycle a lot in one pay period. And so it starts to like add up. So it's like based on your team volume, your sale. I mean, like it's, it's everything right. Combined like your own personal, or is it just your team? That's just your, for team cycle bonus, that's just, just your team. team. Okay. Yeah, and then your commissions is the, the other side of it, yeah. So it's everything that they're selling. Yep. Their team selling. That's and, awesome. and purchasing, so yeah. what, whatever they buy too, it goes yeah. into the, the volume. Did uh, any other questions about that? Otherwise, I want to know what you guys are doing for personal development these days so I can get recommendations. <laughs> I want some new recommendations too. I did just buy um, the uh, Gary, uh, whoever's speaking, I don't even know how you say his last name. Yeah, Chuck. Yeah. Chuck. I bought his old, like the jab jab, right? Oh, home. yeah. Because I've never read it. So I bought that. And then I also, I'm trying to read it from my bookshelf. And I can't read it. Something about Awaken Your Soul. Something or other. I don't know. But I have that Starfish book. And I almost picked it up the other day. Oh, really? I started like flipping through it. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize this was doTERRA. Which is fine. Yeah, I didn't but either. I, was like, I don't know if I can like. Like you were saying, like shift my mind to yeah. make it think that. But I will eventually read it because it's not very big. But I'm reading, I think it's called, I sent you a picture of it. I think it's called mm -hmm. The Layered Layered Leadership. Yeah, something like that. It's Layers really of good. Really, really, really good. Um, and every time I've been reading, uh, the whole time I'm reading it, I'm thinking, I really yeah. want to mail this to my old boss and be like, <laughs> Read all the stuff I highlighted. Oh, they all suck. <laughs> uh, pointers for you to keep your company afloat. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's really good. It's the power of layered leadership. Yeah, it's good. And it's not very big. Will so you please do that? Amber, will you please do that and let me know how it goes yeah. so when I leave the prison, I can send it to you them. Too. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I felt the same way when I was reading. Um, Oh, Dave Ramsey's Entre Leadership. Mm. I was like, oh, I just left my job. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just want to copy these pages and send them to this company. This is pathetic. <laughs> so basically, we're better, we're better leaders than half these people that are running companies. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone read the Napoleon Hill, the old school, Think and Grow Rich? No, oh, I have it though. I tried to. I think I got yeah. like. I think it's I got, pretty tough, isn't it? Pretty what? Tough to like read, like. Yeah. It's, yeah. Are you yeah. reading it right now or attempting? Yeah, I'm like a hundred pages in. I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how I was too, and I couldn't. Yeah. I think it's just too old. Yeah. But everyone swore by it. They were like, "Oh, it's so classic and so good. You have to read it." Yeah. 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 Don't don't waste your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I'm gonna pick up Laura Casey next though. Oh that's good. Which yeah, I know what, what is it? Make it happen? Is that what yeah. the one? Yeah, that that's, yeah, that's a really good one. I keep going back to uh You are a badass. I love that. Like I'll just pick yeah. it up and look at the things I've highlighted. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you a little boost. <laughs> You're right. I am a bad <laughs> Read that one. You have or haven't? No, I did. I just read it for the second time. Yeah, it's good. I have yet to read it. It's on my list. I just have so many. <laughs> Are you reading on your Kindle now? Yeah. I figured. I don't like it as much, but. <laughs> yeah, you're limited. Yeah, I have like maybe this much room for books yeah. right now. So we just brought like our 
must haves. Yeah. So. Yeah. Definitely. I That's don't know how you time actually. You time have people to read. You people <laughs> have time to read. I'm a. I'm a. I. That's the first thing I do when I get up in the morning. I love reading. I yeah. just can't justify it. I love yeah. books on tape right now. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. That's that what works. I used to do when I was working full-time. I was listening. That's how I got it in. was just, or listening to podcasts when I got ready in the morning. Yeah. And yep. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. I still try to do that. It's, yeah. hard. it's harder now, though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't listen to podcasts as much. I just listen to the National Wake Up Doll. Yeah. I just found Brendan Bouchard's podcast. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah, like how long did it take me to get there? But <laughs> I found it, finally. Those are nice because they're like yeah. 10, 15 minutes max. Yeah. yeah. Is that? Brendan Bouchard? Bouchard? What's, what's, what's his? Uh, the Charge Life. Charge, charge Life. life. Yeah. yeah. He was I like it, Haley. He's amazing. I um, didn't. I didn't like him at first, like when Dan got really got into him, because he's very like hyperactive. Yeah. Um, and he was just too much for me. But then we saw him. He spoke at live at Shalene's um, Smart Success, and he was amazing. And I was yeah sold. <laughs> Have you read any of his books? No, but I need to. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to his podcast. Yeah. Darren Hardy needs a, needs a podcast. He does his Darren dailies. They're like three minutes long or something. I don't, I get into my in inbox, but I don't ever listen to him. <laughs> I signed up for him. That's a hard way to get them because then you're like chained to your computer or yeah. they should just put them. data or something. They should just put them all into a podcast. What's his, uh, what's his best book, do you think? I haven't read any of his. Darren's? Yeah. Um, I think I've only read one, The Compound Effect. Oh, yeah. I have read that. Never mind. He has another one. Oh, yeah, about roller coasters or something. Yeah, and it was good. I read it. I'm trying to... I, the entre I think it's called The Entrepreneur Coast Roller Coaster or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Staring at my books, trying to see what else I have. Um, who's the guy? Oh, John Acuff. I love John Acuff. Huh. I've never heard of him. He did. Um, it's called. Well, he did one called Quitter, which is really good. Well, they're all good, but the other one's called Start. I can't read it all. It's a really long title, but his last name is like A-C-U-F-F, -F, John Acuff. It's really good. Mm. That one's really, the Quitter one's really good about like balancing, if you're working full time, like balancing this plus your job. Cause like I was in a place where I absolutely hated my job, but I couldn't quit. You know, and that's what he's all about. Like, don't quit. Like, look at it. He's like teaching you how to look at it in a more positive outlook. Like, this is the way to get you to where you want to be, kind of thing. So, really good. Have you guys read this one? Uh uh. It's a really good one. Um, Simon Sinek. He spoke mm -hmm. last year at Summit. Yeah. Yep. Start with why. And then this is a network marketing book, but it's really good. Mm -hmm. I've not read that one either. By Jordan Adler. It's really short. I really liked it. Has anybody read this one? No. 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 Have you read it yet? No, but one of my husband's weird friends gave it to us for our wedding, and I never even paid attention. And I'm like, what is this? It talks about awakening to your life's purpose. So I might try it. Yeah, try it. I have one of his books, but I've not read it. I don't know. <laughs> one of your husband's friends. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Um, whoops, I'm still recording this. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will get a nice. <laughs> <laughs> what what are they? Doing? Personal development recommendation. <laughs> we all need them. Yep. <laughs> like, even if you don't really have time, I bought, I picked up the John Maxwell. I think you have it too, Laura. The daily, like, yeah. it's just like a quick, quick one page read every day, and I get a lot of takeaway from that. Me too. Like 365 yeah. days of leadership or something. Hmm. It's good. Yeah. What is it called? I don't think I have it right here. Um, the Maxwell Daily Reader. That one. Mm -hmm. or the, yeah, that one. Yeah, I really like that one. Yep. I've been reading the um, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff book. Like, there's, I think there's, like, a book for each, like, kind of, like, a work one and a personal life one and a whole bunch of them. But this one is, like, sections of each, like, excerpts. And that's kind of cool because they're all, like, two pages, three pages each. Oh, cool. Yeah. I read that in, like, middle school. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, they're simple and you can, like, summarize it in a paragraph as opposed to... Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Haley, you're glowing. Yeah, so you look kind of possessed. <laughs> <laughs> like a teenage mutant ninja.